what keeps you up at night? Is it the you know increasing uh, frequency of extreme events, you know, severe droughts and floods and storms, or is it sort of the more slowly developing, creeping desertification, um, water scarcity issues that we hear about? Mm. Which one of those sort of sides of the coin do you find most concerning? The system we live in um, and work in in the Okavango River Basin is highly variable. So it's already prone to droughts and it's prone to flooding. And there's floods every year. Mm -hmm. And then there's 20 year cycle floods and there's 50 year cycle floods. And given the natural variability of the systems, it's hard to say uh, the predictive models are, are pretty broad, but what's clear, they do see more extreme events. There's going to be more droughts and, and more intense floods. You know, mm -hmm. the intensity is what's going to change. And the thing that concerns us are the vulnerability of the people, because many people these are dry areas, and they live right on the river. Mm -hmm. So floods and droughts, are they're extremely vulnerable too. But the major issue that we're facing now is um, in, in terms of wildlife is poaching. Poaching is reaching levels that it, it hasn't had in you know, 40 years. Mm. We're seeing, um, I think, um, in some areas, we're seeing poaching year-to-date numbers exceeding the cumulative numbers for the past 10 years. So that's, that's the big crisis. That's the one that, um, it's, that does keep me up at night. And with that crisis in mind and some of the work that you've done bringing you know, parties to the table who might seem to have conflicting ideas about how to use land, whether it's mining or um, farming or tourism, when it comes to combating poaching, do you see more needed in on the enforcement side or on the sort of inclusion side, bringing poachers into the system mm -hmm. and um, you know, how much progress can be made that way right. versus just cracking down on what's happening? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the major way to deal with the issue is, is a demand issue. Okay, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's out of the scope of what we do. We work in Southern Africa, so we're dealing with that side, but it would note that the demand side is a, is a huge area and that's much of this is going to uh, to Asia, Vietnam, China, and right. working on the demand side, I think, is, is a key issue. But on the ground in Southern Africa, we have, there's two basic approaches. I think one of them is the community approach. You're talking about inclusion. Um, yeah, because these poachers, even if they're backed by international syndicates, will be from the communities. So right. giving the communities incentives to protect the wildlife, giving communities, um, giving that wildlife value to those communities so they will protect it. Um, and it, maybe it stops people from poaching or maybe it helps have a social pressure. Even if that one person is doing poaching, the other people don't find that as acceptable as opposed to just turning away. On the enforcement side, um, some of the countries are stronger than others where you work. Botswana is particularly strong on enforcement. But it's a, there's lots of borders, porous borders. So what we've been working on is information sharing. I mean, working with uh, the U.S. Embassy and all the different governments in the region to try to establish a, a, a wildlife enforcement network where enforcement uh, professionals in the different countries are sharing information in, in real time. And I think that's an important step. Great.